Hi, and welcome to my OCRE A-Level Biology Revision session with me, Christine. So today's lesson, I want to look at sex determination and linkage. So we know that humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes. And if you understand what that means is that we have got these chromosomes which are different sizes and different shapes. And what you can see here in my chromatogram is that a female has got 23 pairs of chromosomes number one all the way down to number 22 and then our sex chromosomes which are number 23. Now if you are female genetically you possess the XX chromosome. If you are male genetically you can have the X Y chromosome. Now it's important to note that the X chromosome is large and contains many genes that are not involved in sexual development. Whereas the Y chromosome is really small and contains almost no genetic information, but it does carry a gene that causes the embryo to develop as a male. So it's important that you understand that your sex is determined by the gametes that you inherited. So meiosis is a reduction division and meiosis produces haploid gametes. And those haploid gametes are going to either, if you're female, carry the X chromosome, or if you are male, through the meiotic division, the gametes could either carry the Y chromosome, the smaller chromosome, or they can carry the X chromosome, which is the larger chromosome. So when you actually look at sexual reproduction and the fusion of these gametes to produce offspring, it is that which determines the sex. So is it the sperm cell that's carrying the Y chromosome that fuses with the egg cell to produce the male XY chromosomes, or is it the sperm cell that's carrying the X chromosome that fuses with the egg cell to give the offspring which would have the XX? So therefore, if we are looking at our phenotypic ratio that we can get with sex determination, it is a one to one ratio of male to female. So there's a 50% chance of having a male offspring and a 50% chance of having a female offspring, but it is determined by which of the sperm cells fertilized the egg cell. So that is how the determination of sex occurs. Now what I want to look at is sex linkage. So there are some characteristics, some genes that actually will be inherited on that X chromosome. These are called sex linked genes. So if, for example, we understand color blindness is a recessive trait, if you are a homozygous individual, you are female, therefore you are carrying the dominant trait with a female because you're homozygous, you would be unaffected in red-green color blindness. If you were heterozygous, therefore you are female, you are heterozygous because you carry one dominant allele and one recessive allele, you would be classed as a carrier for this sex link gene. And if you were female and you were carrying homozygous recessive alleles, you would therefore be affected with color blindness. So the male has one of the dominant alleles, therefore they are unaffected. With regards to the males, if they inherit a recessive allele from the mother, they would therefore be affected. Because there is no dominant allele to mask the presence of the recessive allele, they only need to have one of those alleles for the trait to be expressed. So when it's a sex-linked gene, 
With regards to males, you only need to carry one of the recessive alleles for that trait to be expressed. So it's really important that you note this doesn't follow the same rule as we have seen with dominant and recessive traits. Because in sex linkage, when you are male, you only have to have one of the alleles for that trait to be expressed. So red-green color blindness is an example of this. So if they were to give you, for example, a inherited diagram that shows you males are square, females are circle, white means they are unaffected and a shaded color means that they are affected, you could look at a diagram like this and you could then work out what the trait was. So we're going to start with color blindness that we know is a recessive trait. So here I could tell you that because I have a female, the circle which is shaded, therefore affected, that tells me that that female has to have the two recessive alleles on the X chromosome. Now the male, because I know it's unaffected, it's white, it therefore tells me that they've got a Y chromosome because they are male, so therefore they have to have the capital, the dominant allele, because they are unaffected. Now, if I'm looking at this genetic diagram and I'm looking at the offspring that they produce, the first thing I'm going to jump to is my males because I know they're going to get their Y from their father and they're therefore going to inherit the allele from the mother. So therefore, straight away, I know that the males have inherited the recessive allele from their mother and the Y chromosome from the father. The next thing I'm going to look at is the fact that the two female offspring, therefore female, they have to be XX, and they are unaffected, they therefore would have to have at least one capital B, well that obviously came from the father, because that's the only place where in this possible inheritance diagram, that capital B could have come from. Therefore, the two females in this family are now carriers of red-green color blindness. So let's have a look at the offspring that have been produced by the one male in the family. So the male in the family we know has the trait, has the recessive allele that they inherited from the mother. Therefore, we know that they are going to pass that on to their daughters because their daughters can only inherit the X from the male. So therefore, straight away, we can fill in this diagram to show that because we have a female with the trait, they have to have two Xs because they're female and they have to have two recessive alleles because they are affected. Therefore, we can determine that the mother is unaffected. So therefore, we know they have to at least have one capital B, but the fact that the children, the two daughters, have the trait and it's a recessive trait means that we can determine that that mother was heterozygous and a carrier for that trait. When we look at the last two males, the offspring, we know that they are males, so therefore they've inherited the Y chromosome from the father, and therefore, because they're unaffected, they have to have got the capital B, the dominant allele, from their mother on the X chromosome. So when we look at sex linkage, with any diagram that they give you, they will expect you to be able to determine where they have inherited which of the alleles from. So we can look at it with regards to haemophilia as well. So haemophilia works in the same way. It's a recessive trait. And the person who has a dominant allele is unaffected if they are heterozygous, female they would be a carrier and if they are carrying the recessive 
alleles homozygous recessive they will be affected with regards to the males it's the same case here that if they have one of the alleles they are unaffected if they have the recessive allele even though they only have one they are affected because it is a recessive trait and there is no dominant allele to mask that trait. So therefore, when we're looking at sex linkage, you only need to inherit one of the recessive alleles for that trait to be expressed. So the same scenario would happen if they're looking at a genetic diagram. You should be able to work it out based on what you know about the inheritance from the male and the female gametes and how they fuse together and whether it's a dominant or whether it's a recessive allele that's been passed on. Now, the colour blindness and haemophilia are the two known examples that we would give you. However, in the exam, they will try to throw you off by giving you a random disease that has been inherited through the sex-linked gene. So remember with an application question what they're checking is do you know the difference between dominant and recessive? Do you know if it is linked on a sex chromosome, the X chromosome, then you only need one of the recessive alleles for the trait to be expressed. So I hope you've liked this video and if you have then please do click on the like button and subscribe to my channel and if you haven't already done so please do check out my revision platform www.eiqchat.com.